Hello and uh, welcome back to um, chapter two, if you like, of uh, the uh, promotion. I suppose someone's got to do it, isn't it? Of this album. It's called um, LMAO Tired. You can buy it from www.spinksguitartech.com. P E C H dot co dot U K. Uh, Sphinx is spelled S P H Y N X. Okay, so www dot Sphinx Guitar Tech dot co dot U K. You've got to go to the menu. A few people have been having trouble getting to the uh, one in particular. It took him twenty five minutes <laughs> to get. Um, so you get you get something that looks like this. Um, you see up here, this is in the top left. It's on my right because everything's back to front. Um, you have to you have to hit that that little uh, button or sign, and it's like three vertical or three horizontal lines. And then when you get there, you see there's two big squares up the top. One's got the album face on and the other one's got something else on I can't remember to the right of it totally ignore that uh, this is after you've chosen the store setting after going to this um, little sign there okay ignore the two, first two because if you click on them you just get a blank I don't know what it's about I have to um, talk with uh, Yell uh, on Monday uh, they're shut on Friday Saturday and Sunday but um, and I really couldn't be bothered today <laughs> Um, but he, he got one in the end and then down the bottom you've got two more two more things where it says LMAO tired and uh, and uh, huff polish which is this stuff here um, which is uh, basically my homemade polish which I use for cleaning uh, guitars with you can use it on fingerboards you can use it on um, on, on painted surfaces or on wood surfaces. So I've been working on it for years and uh, a, lot, a lot of my customers come in and they say why don't you do that stuff? Uh, so I've done it. Uh, you don't put much on when you do it. It comes with a cloth or two. Uh, what I recommend is you get an old sock or something to put it on with and then the first cloth, microfiber cloth, take it off with um, and then the second one you huff on it to like that and blow on it and then uh, that acts as a catalyst because this is old school, this is real wax in there. This is where it's got carnival bone, beeswax and all oils and cleaners and loads of stuff. Don't eat it, it smells nice, but don't eat it. There's a limited batch of each lot and each lot has got its own smell. Um, it's 15 quid including postage. It sounds a lot for a, you know, a tiny little tub of wax like that, but as long as you keep the lid on, that, that will last you five years. I'm, I'm still on the first lot from years ago, mine, mine smells a little bit more chocolatey. This has got chocolate in it, the smell in it, but it's also got um, lots of other smells, including whiskey, I don't you know. I was gonna change it very slightly and the, a few of the people smelled it and went, no, don't change it. Anyway, you might wanna take a boredom pill now because uh, I'm gonna discuss the next little bit of uh, th th this album, which is the electric guitar parts. And I'll be giving a couple of tips uh, again. Uh, when you go, when you click on those two, it's fairly straightforward. Then you you got to go back to a, you scroll back up to the top. There's a blue box, and on this dark blue box, there's black writing, and it says I add to bag. I can't figure that one out either. But you you got to click on that blue box. Um, it, they, they should put white writing on it, really, or it should have been a white background. You know, a bit like this. Like you've got the, imagine if I've got black on blue if you're just not going to see it uh, but these, these things we iron out they did it very quickly for me to be fair um, <laughs> uh, this is my old nowhere fast t-shirt from when I was in a band called nowhere fast so I thought it was appropriate to wear it today uh, yeah so the next thing I was going to do is oh, why am I talking over a manky old table I don't know if you can see it very much but it's got a lot of family history, so I thought it was nice to, um, this is a bit of family history for me now. Um, my nan originally bought this table in 1936, I think it was in Charles Harding, uh, and she lived in Bugle at the time. And uh, she, she went down there when the war started, um, and 
this was their honeymoon suite. She 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 was born in 1912. She lasted. She was up to 104, which was last year. Um, <laughs> and this table was always spotless. There was, it was absolutely mint. Um, but since it's been here, it's, <laughs> it's been have that. It's had things spilt on it. Whiskey, wine, you know, uh, all, all kinds of things. But they, they've been good good times together so it is, it's still part of the family history I'm not getting rid of it just uh, thought you you know bit of family history she hid in it underneath it with my nan during the war when a German legislator came over and strafed their gardens down in Bugle uh, with incendiary devices Mr. Houses uh, just the civilians you know um, but she hid underneath this table if they, if they hit the the house instead, then I might not be here now. Or maybe this table would have protected them. I don't know. But it's, it's just a bit of family history. Uh, right, so, um, that, that, that's the table. I've got my tick-off box again. If you see lots of light flashing on my eyes because my front room lights <laughs> are aiming right at me. This really is a, a chill with the end time. So again, I've got time to skip to the guitar -y parts if you want. You know, uh, you probably already have. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I, what I'm doing is I'm, t I'm I would have ticked them off if I had a a pen. <laughs> so I'm going to have to pretend I've ticked them off now, uh, as I do them. But the first thing was um, explore the thinking between the next two to three uh, uh, tracks on here, which is nowhere fast was the next one, which is why I wore the old T-shirt. The song's called Nowhere Fast as well. It wasn't just a band I was in. I brought it back. The whole thinking behind the, the phrase nowhere fast is you're sat in a car, you, you, you can't go anywhere, you're at a junction and the lack of common courtesy basically people will pull on a junction even if it's a box junction and they will sit right in front of you and they just look blankly forward. They don't they don't look at you at all, they just look and it's infuriating really because you, you, you could have eased the congestion and, uh, and it would be a lot easier for everyone. But that, that's just a little bit of the history of the song. Uh, we all sit in sometimes super fast cars, super slow cars, lorries, vans, it doesn't matter. You, you, you're on the road and uh, you ain't going anywhere fast nowadays. <laughs> With too many speed bumps, traffic lights uh, and other cars on the road. Um, Anyway, that's a whole new uh, thing for other people to talk about. Right, I'd like to say thank you on here as well for uh, Rory, who's my brother. He's from RWP, based tuition, based in Plymouth, based. Um, who did the uh, basing on 95% of this album. He was terrific. He came in, he didn't know the stuff. He just <laughs> came in. And I said, can you do this? Can you do that? He was like, give us half hour, boom, 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 go. And this track was, I think it's 11 minutes or something like that, 10, 11, 12 minutes. And it's got like 10 guitar solos on it, plus a little interlude, plus a little bit in the beginning. And it's a bit in the beginning I'm going to uh, discuss. Um, just to give you some guitar ideas. Like I say, you might want to drink. I've got something a bit nicer there, but... Uh, it, Norland glass and this um, pot, it fits exactly <laughs> in it. So that's my whiskey for tonight. It ain't for now, um, but uh, I, I'll, I'll very much look forward to that later on. And it, it, it actually, if you don't finish it all or whatever, uh, just stick a. <laughs> it's got a second, a second use to it. Um, Great glass, you swirl it around and it's got little fins in it and you can actually, it breaks up the, uh, it gives the nose a lot more, um, what, what they call a nose in whiskey, this is the, the smell of it, but it breaks, it makes it smell nicer basically, you get more of it um, and that prepares your palate, uh, I don't know if you know anything about whiskey, you probably don't care, but a lot of people they do, oh I don't like whiskey, I was like that for 30 something years and then my friend Jack come along and he said you, you, you're drinking the wrong stuff um, don't go with all the regular uh, you know I, I don't want to diss any names on here but there's a lot of what I thought was the main brands and it turned out they're like paint stripper really 
uh, a really good one that I do recommend, Glanphilic 15. If you've never tried it before, it's quite reasonable. You don't drink it all in one go. <laughs> you, no, one bottle will last you, uh, you know, well, as long as you want it to last. You can open it and finish it next year, you know. Um, but uh, you just warm it in the glass first. This is to, 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 to stop your hand from warming it, but I actually like it. It's got a double insulative um, layer to it. But so I have to warm it for twice as long and then you breathe the smell and, and then after you've prepared your palate by breathing the smell and warming the glass then you, you just sip it all night you know, whack it all back in like they do in the cowboy movies <laughs> that's terrible anyway, um, yeah, going back to it I'm waffling on, aren't I? you're all gone uh, but if I put this track on a minute on my old Philips CD player which I had to buy in order to be able to play something So what you've got there is a, the first little interesting thing is accent displacement. Uh, if I did the same thing twice, if I've got my foot tapping, I go, it's, a, it's the same thing. And a lot of guitarists I've noticed over the years, they start on the same note all the time, the same beat is one, it's ba da 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 don't stretch something, change something. All right, so here I've got so the second note is longer. Yeah, so just by changing that one tiny inflection, you give something a whole different feel. Okay, so you could take one of my um, favorite things that I you know talk about <laughs> probably too much. Is uh, just accent displacement, Ch changing the, the 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 rhythm of something. And uh, I read somewhere years and years ago uh, that they said, "What can you make with three notes?" And I thought, "Well, <laughs> and then you go, I want to go somewhere else now." No, no, no. If you if you think of a phrase, that, and I, I used to annoy my wife with, with this quite a lot, just saying "no money" because we had no money. So I used to go, "No money, no money." No money, no money, no money, no money. Okay, and you get as many ways as you can say it. No money, no money, no money. Okay, as many ways as you can say it, and believe me, <laughs> I, I get chased around the house as well. Um, you, you can play it. So, guitar is a language, so you could go, No money, no money, no money, no money. So you can you can end up with a, a real array of really interesting uh, rhythms. I don't do it on this track so much. I do it on one called Silverlight, uh, which is I'm counting backwards towards the original one, towards the, the, the start of the album. I'm going from the finish, so I've gone through the acoustic section. This is the section where I really go for it on the guitar. Um, <laughs> I'm not capable today. I'm learning gypsy jazz at the same time, and it messes your picking up with regular picking, basically. <laughs> Uh, so don't expect too much today, but I'm going to try and show you some of those ideas. That's one, accent displacement, right? So it's, which comes from, look, uh, remember yesterday I talked about this A minor shape. Okay, well today, um, there's your, there's your, <laughs> your minor shape, it's two frets up, it's in B minor. If I play everything in A minor, everyone will go, oh, oh it's a good you know, uh, very often if you're uh, since I've been playing gypsy jazz, everything's in like B flat and E flat. It's really strange to get your head around, especially if you're used to the dots. So you're better off learning on a guitar that's got the dots changed around or taken off uh, in gypsy because they, they actually do your head in. But we'll talk more about gypsy later. Uh, another time, girl. My gypsy pub lap guitar, which I'm very proud of. 
Um, yeah, so this B minor, look. So I'm, I'm just breaking the three. Here's the, here's the arpeggio if you want to know what it is. 14, 10. You can try this, yeah? 14, 10, 12, 11, 12, 14. Alright, it's just a standard minor arpeggio. A lot of people play with the front pick up this. When you're doing that, I pick. And then I pull off. Some people re-pick their da 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 you can do. But I pick, pull, up, 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 up. If I'm starting from here, I'll go down, 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 up, pull, up, 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 up. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or if you want eleven. But you, you, you're missing out on those then. So generally you'll do a little hammer or something. Or you might take up the, the fourth in there, yeah? Yeah? Yeah, you've heard all the neoclassical players do that. Uh, it's nothing new, but it's quite interesting just how it's formed. So um, I'll do this little accent displacement. And then... Come down to a major. Or, I think I'll do that. Yeah, so. Right, which is and that's a it's a C shape. It's a C shape there. This is a kind of like a D minor shape, really. There, that. And now we're going down to a D major shape. If we just take those three. There's your D. Wherever you slide that, that's another cool thing you can do, just moving stuff around. Yeah, do that. So that the, the little break at the start. Uh, right, that's a, the main kind of intro. Wrote it last of all, we were actually rolling and uh, I, I had to put in the out intro afterwards because obviously I can't play the guitar and the, uh, the, the lead and the rhythm at the same time and, and the rhythm was already on this as well. Put your first finger on the two thinnest, lift your second finger up, and grab that one with your thumb if you can. If you can, just don't play that note. But I, I grab it with the thumb and you get this. Yeah. What that means if you move down two frets, keep the G ringing. And that's a really good Nixolydian map of a prop. That's for another time. Um, if I, if I do that, you know, I usually do that with lessons and things like that, but, but just that is quite cool. And then E, last of all, again, a cool E, instead of just a, an E major or an E minor, grab the first two, with, uh, so you've got an open fixed string, then you grab the next two with your first finger, so that's the fifth and back to the root again, and then play the your fifth and the root again. Sound. It's, it's on the chord thread, it's not on the, the Yamaha this. I did the actual main solo uh, after she goes, Won't you learn to drive? Oh, no, that, that's done on the little Yamaha, and I absolutely love that little Yamaha, I think it's great. Uh, I, uh, Mike, one of the guys who's on there as well, he listened and he went, That's not a chord thread. You could tell it had a totally different kind of ambience of silence around it. And it's, I'm not even going to try and explain that, but you can tell a digital modelling amp from a from a normal amp because of the silence that it creates around it. It's a really um, when you hear it, you you can't stop hearing it on anything, on any of them. Uh, not naming any of it, but uh, that, that, that's my uh, tube amp all the way for me. We all know that anyway, but use the tools that are on hand. You know, I've still got an old pod that I dig out from time to time. But it's all right. 
Uh, it's not important. This is digital, this THR10. Um, put in, the, in the picture a little bit more. It's funny, you, you put the, the phone on and then the, the picture changes to what it was before you had it all set up. <laughs> and this is my little fan here. It's my, probably my only one. <laughs> my littlest, biggest fan, I think, someone said. Um, yes, I'll put my northern glass over there. Right, so yeah, well, we've got this. That's your, that's your um, move this out of the way. World, world class music. Look, more plug in. Uh, I've got only ever had one mug. Thought about doing them, but that, that's a cool worldclassmusic.co.uk. We've had some of the best guitarists in the world down to Plymouth. And they play to about 30 people sometimes, sometimes 100. But you can meet them afterwards. Well, well, well worth checking out. We even had lessons with them. I wish there was a world-class music in every single city, I really do, or even two. I, if someone else set up a world-class music tomorrow, I would be there every time they had a world-class musician there. But they have to be world-class, not just say what they are. And you get to know that throughout the eons of time, who's got it and who hasn't. Um, we've had some amazing players. Um, Andy Timmons, he's come here twice for us. Lovely guy. Um, who else have we had? Uh, Paul Gilbert, uh, Christoph Godin, who's actually uh, on the album. He's got solo number two on there. He's been very, very. I'll put this in the. You know, let's see, the stand up in there, so you don't forget it. And that's what I'm plugging. Buy, buy the physical copy while it's still there. It's a little bit expensive. Yeah, it's twelve pound, and then there's another three quid for postage. Uh, but um, you're getting a physical album. It has got a gatefold out, and it's got a little. A bit of history about me and, and, and my thinking behind things and there's also got some pictures in there of, of the guys who were on it and girls um, and as well as Rory who going back to that before I ramble too much well I've already rambled too much but um, he, he did 95% of the bass and he did this in one kind of take <laughs> for the whole thing and we, we, we had about three run throughs and I can't remember we, whether we took take one, take two or take three, but it was all pretty much done in one take. And uh, they were playing for like 10, 11, 12 minutes solid, Rory and Kate. Uh, Kate Rogers is the drummer on this track and she did a phenomenal job. She's not a, a, a smarty pants drummer, she's not, you know, roll this kind of stuff. She's just got groove and that's why it's worth its weight in gold. And dynamics. Find me a drummer that's got dynamics that can play in the same room as you at the same level as you, even if you're playing at this level. We used to have another guy um, in World, World Class Media, he, he, he drummed for us during uh, Paul Gilbert, and he, he had the same thing, it's called Sean, Sean May, and he just, he, he wasn't really right for Paul Gilbert, because he, he wasn't a metal player, he was a groove drummer, and I remember being so impressed, because I played with him in a little studio room, in the, in the same school we used to teach in. And he was fantastic. He had phenomenal groove. And his dynamics were wonderful. And he could, he was playing along with me. We were like messing about with, you know, smoke and water, something like that. And uh, it, it, we were talking as we were playing. And that's the kind of drummer you want. You just, with all these, wow. It's, all, it's really exciting to watch the heavy, heavy drummers. But you can't hear yourself. You can make deaf afterwards and nobody else heard anything. So that's, that's my take on drumming, so I'll probably upset a lot, uh, but I, I, that's what I'm after. Dynamics and groove, very important. Um, if, if they're too loud, give them lighter sticks or brushes, you know. Uh, but it might be just me getting old, and that, that would be um, some of the other drummers that I've worked with in the past response. They say, you, you're old and I'd have to agree. Yeah, I am. Never saw myself getting into Toto, never saw myself getting into... Um, Gypsy Jam, I can tell you that. Uh, right, anyway, so that's your minor, that's your major. You could also take that down another two frets. If you okay, you could also go up again and uh, do that one. That's a 12 and 9, that's an F sharp. Or, you, yeah, 
We'll, we'll call it an F sharp for now. Uh, diminished. Every three frets. So you've got this, uh... Um, so that so that's 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 one of the things, right? Something like that. It is. I, I, I can't remember. It's been a, like nine months before I played it. Um, since I played it. Yeah, you're just walking down. As long as it sounds something like it. So yeah, Kate Rogers, and she uh, works at or owns, I don't know, uh, the Early Energy Learning Centre, I think it is, in, based in, uh, just over the bridge in Cornwall, um, and she does a lot of like um, plays and things like that, and Kate has come, comes from the, the drumming background of actually following, so the plays will be happening, yeah, all this amateur dramatics and what, what, what not. And she'll be drumming along and following, and that's got to be one of the most difficult skills you can do. I think she's also a like a you know a top grade diploma level uh, woodland player as well. But, uh, so she she really knows her stuff. So there's someone to get hold of for for drumming. Um, but she literally came in. We had no click tracks or anything. It was just bang, let's go. And she had like one or two run throughs. Like, oh, 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 okay. And, uh, and that, that was it, and that's that's the way we roll here, okay? <laughs> so if you're after perfection, ain't gonna get it on this album. Uh, another thing you could do, you could tap. Well, that's all the smarty, smarty, you know, flash. that along with that so far. Oh. <laughs> You've got to plumb it into the gas as well. Oh yeah. Ten, nine, eight, nine, ten. Three. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Players like uh, there's a player called Steve Stevens. I think he did that on Atomic Playboys. Best rhythm sound in rock. If you haven't heard that album, that track Atomic Playboys is just brilliant. It's <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, that, that's that's the best rhythm rock rhythm sound I've ever heard. So you really want to check that out. Check out his stuff. He's fantastic. Steve, if you ever <laughs> if you ever haven't fallen asleep and you listen to this, come come and see us at World Class Music, mate. Just come and do a show for us. You, you're phenomenal. Same with Steve Luker for everyone else who's not interested. Right, okay. Um, you, you, so you press down on this... Yeah, on your, on your, on your uh, G... I'll, I'll press on the G string, you can press on whatever you like. And at the same time, you pull the bar down that. Yeah, I don't think he's the first person. I think Brad Gillis and people like that were, were doing it a long time before then. But it's brilliant, you know. Um, just, just a little bit of fun, you know. You can do sequels as well. If you use your pick and you just... <laughs> okay, so that's another one you can do. You can also pull your pick back across the string. Yeah. Right, and frogs. Whatever else. Whales. That's more, um, you know, going to Van Halen territory, I suppose. 
so that, that, that that's just a couple of little things from um, I'm gonna just pause this a minute just for a second yeah back again <laughs> uh, to get what the heck I was on about here um, so the ten soloists on here are me I'll do the interlude and then the main first solo uh, and then uh, Chris Golden I'd like to thank immensely for doing the the, the uh, the second solo, uh, he's a phenomenal guitarist, he's in Morgable. They've come and played for us and they've given us the best show we've ever had. The, the full show, it's a full band, uh, we've never laughed so much. And he, he can he can go head to head with, with any guitarist on the planet. He's really good fun. I really recommend him for if, he, if, 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 we, if we ever get him back again, and I'd love to. Um, well worth a watch. He's also got, done his own kind of semi-jazz metal album called um, Metal Cartoon and it's one of my favourite albums, it's all in French, I haven't got a clue what they're saying uh, but I just, just like it, so I'm singing along in the car, I don't even know French, I'm rubbish but uh, I'm singing along in my own made up French <laughs> uh, Right, so Chris does a second one, uh, James another phenomenal player who's on the circuit and he's uh, either like a session guitarist now uh well worth watching him if you, if you get a chance uh i've had the pleasure of knowing these guys for years and uh, i've watched their advancement in in guitar uh, you know it's just a stunning guitarist really fast just like perfect timing uh guitarist is life loves it uh, there's another guy called Mike, who's fourth, Mike Ball, uh, and uh, he's um, he's pretty pretty national now, I would say, uh, if not international. Uh, another stunning player. They're all stunning players, right? They all leave me for dead with this technique stuff. I try and hang on to feel them. Uh, you know, years ago I considered myself a technique teacher, um, and now I realise I'm, <laughs> I'm a fairly sloppy feel player but um i have got a little bit of feel i think so um i try and cling on to that and uh, i like lots of different styles as well i do recommend you don't just learn one style even if you're into just metal or i was into just punk you know but i couldn't help liking abba at the same time and apparently that was wrong but um and it worked for me um my adrian then adrian Carr. after that another stunning player um quite a English kind of guy, uh, but, but he's got a lot of different talents to him, Adrian. Um, hi, AD. Uh, Nathan, he's gone and moved to Australia, Nathan Heaney. Um, great sixth solo, uh, very Lukey ish, you know, br brilliant, brilliant stuff. Uh, Ryland was after that, and he did um, number seven. Um, and he's got a great, uh, one of the best vibratos I've heard, and, and a real laid back feel, which is important. Then there's a guy called Ian Cook, um, who uh, is a good uh, buddy of mine who he, he, he plays in a band called Souls of Misfortune. They're worth a watch. Um, slightly gothy, I suppose, in feel, um, but he's totally not like the rest of them. He, he, he plays. Just musically, there's no, there's no uh, beating around the bush with him. You get raw kind of meat and potatoes, you know. Just very um, Rolling Stones-ish. You know, got that kind of feel to him. Uh, very uh, just musical, um, but, the, but 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 hardly any guitar tricks. Just just from the heart. I like that. Um, and he gets a double length one because. Uh, a friend of mine who couldn't make it called Lee uh, he, he was probably on the next album if I ever do one um, but he couldn't make it so there was a double slot there and I divided the rest of them up wrong some of these I hope the files are in the right place because uh, we, we we had endless confusion with them hence you know Emma took over as the sound engineer basically and she's done amazing since she's got it all back together again but we weren't sure where some of the files sat so we're hoping they were um, Daryl, because they were obviously they were sent across the world. 
Daryl Daryl's gone and moved over to um, Australia as well now, uh, so he's over there with uh, down there <laughs> with, uh, with with Nathan and Daryl's another stunning player, great acoustic feel as well, uh, understands about space. And Andrew Mitchell was the last one we'd like to thank, and he did. Um, he does like Tommy Manuel kind of stuff, that kind of you know crazy. Uh, finger picking, chat acting, these stuff which I've done, which is so difficult. But Andrew's really on the ball with that. Um, so I'd like to thank him for doing that too. Just gonna have a little sip of my um, coffee from a world class music mug. <laughs> Strategically placed there. So that's one of these done. Uh, not many guitar tips for how much talking I'm doing, is it? Let's hope we can change that. Um, the next track back is any old M Morricone. If you say it differently, it sounds like any old Morricone. Well, Morricone, macaroni, any old macaroni. Anyway, uh, macaroni being similar to spaghetti. We all know where it, that's coming from. This is just my tongue-in-cheek whistle-along track, which I hope sticks in your head forever. Uh, it's quite funny when you start whistling that one back and trying to raise the pitch of the whistle. And my brother's an amazing whistler, uh, Rory, how good he is on him. But um, he can't bend whistles, and I can, but I, I'm not such a good whistler, so that's what you get. Um, so I'm sorry for that. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to play any old macaroni grip, but it's, um, it's just a little fun track in a couple of minutes. Uh, and then we've got, right, um, Fade Away. Now this is where Claire, uh, Claire is a singer on um, Nowhere Fast and she's a stunning singer. Always has been, a great voice. But she, we, we, we wanted to do something different on Fade Away. It just sounded a little bit, a bit sad. A bit. So what we got her to do, what we, we, what we didn't tell her, but we took all the takes that she did and we just overlaid them so everything kind of slithers and snakes into the